Travis Wayne Goods all. So, going over the comments that you guys have left me, I, I, typically, because I hold all comments for review, I don't have people creating chains of comments. But there was a certain female who commented. As long as you are nice, I'll allow your comment for her. <laughs> Nonetheless, I had another uh, person who was wanting to know how we're related, so I sent him the Ancestry.com link, or .org. I think it's, well, it's FamilySearch.org. to show our common uh, it would be great grandfather Joseph Franklin Goodsell and uh, then we have a Michael Redwine and his comment will be banned as he will be banned. I have too many people who find my videos for the first time and think they know better than me and think that they're more intelligent than I and think that they can help me. And most of the time it's been my method of presentation. Oh, they can help me. Oh, Travis. If you just pacify, flatter, and deceive the Mormons, you'd get a better response. <laughs> Your teaching method sucks. <laughs> Let me help you, Travis. Get the hell off my channel. And so, yeah, we have another one. When you read your Gospels, because you believe that Jesus is real, and you don't care to know the real history behind why the Jewish scriptures are now all of a sudden to be interpreted by Constantine Christians as literal history, that Jesus now therefore is real and was living during the Roman period of time, you come across these guys named Pharisees and they're always attacking Jesus you're doing this wrong you're violating the Sabbath you're violating the law Deuteronomy you're you're acting like Beelzebub you worshiper of Satan you're drunk you're a criminal you're a terrorist threat threatening to destroy this temple 72 CE now they think they knew better than Jesus in the story they thought that they could control him take away his agency and force him to comply to their created standards and values for strength of the youth pamphlet force him to not drink Mountain Dew. <laughs> Tell him to use abstinence only. Stay away from Mary Magdalene, your wife. John, I've done the videos, guys. 3.2 plus videos now on this channel alone. I had YouTube send me a threat today because back during COVID, I was warning you to hearken to the Council of Medical Doctors that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is teaching you not to listen to the medical doctors. And so they used that against me and said that I wasn't 
telling you to follow medical doctors. And so after all these years, they said, hey, just take a quick video preview and we'll erase your community guidelines strike. They silenced me before conference. That was the reason why they attacked me on a non-issue video. And so all these years later, no further strikes, and boom, they remind me that they control my channel and that they can shut me down and silence me whenever they choose. So, don't be surprised if all of a sudden you can't see any more uploads from me. That all of a sudden the previous video is the last video because YouTube silenced me because of a false accusation, just like the Pharisees did to Jesus. And so, Mormons just don't get it. The Book of Mormon, the Keystone of Mormonism. First Nephi, chapter one, verse two. I keep repeating the videos and different presentations that lots of people love to correct me with. <laughs> Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews and the language of the Egyptians. This is the Jewish Christ that the Book of Mormon is talking about. Christianity was not created until 325 CE. So even if you believe the Book of Mormon is literal history, there's no way in your right mind you would believe that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. And yet, so the Jewish Christ is found in the law of the Jews. Chapter 18, starting in verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. It's technically the author who's claiming to be Moses. <laughs> but it's a man like Moses. The stories of Moses are not literal history, therefore. And the thing that's important is because if you were to actually study your scriptures, you'd see down in the footnotes below, Joseph Smith History 140. So the sun at noonday comes to Joseph Smith, and when you look in the Joseph Smith papers, don't you? You know that it's Nephi, not Moroni. Oops, wrong statue on all the temples around the world, even the Orem Temple that's brand new, having their open house right now was covered in the church news today. He's talking about the latter days and the prophecies of the latter days. And guess what? There's going to be the Christ who's going to come in the latter days. Boom, verse 40. The Jewish Christ, a man like Moses. Because he says, refer to Acts 22nd and 23rd verses of the third chapter. Because that's a quote from Deuteronomy. And it's in the Book of Mormon, too. 3rd Nephi 20, 23. 2023. Hilarious. The day that shall burn is in heaven. This is the bicentennial year. All this year I was covering it. Church never covered it. I'm the only one who covered it. Church covered it up. In the Book of Mormon, in the beginning. They have Joseph Smith's history in the beginning of the Book of Mormon, in the introductory, introductory pages. And I did the video with you, and we went live, 
and boom, the day that you'll burn is an oven, gone. <laughs> the Christ, gone. <laughs> Just little asterisks. Church does not want you to know this information. And why? Oh, gee, Armageddon has started in Israel. Huh, that sounds like it could be important. Because Mormons are told you're supposed to listen to your Christ. <laughs> Oops. And so, as I keep telling you, Section 103, talking about the latter days and the redemption of Zion. Therefore, verse 16, I will raise up unto my people, not the Jews. Hmm. Jewish Christ, but it's not the Christ for the Jews. Joseph Smith changes it for the Mormons. The Jewish Christ, the man like Moses, the one mighty and strong. I did that video the other day. Still have Joseph Fielding Smith Sr.'s first presidency statement on the one mighty and strong coming up. It's a long one. It'll be a long video. Just to give you advance warning. But, uh, yeah who shall lead the Mormons like as Moses. Because Mormons are in bondage. They need to be freed. What church are Mormons in? Hmm. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so, imagine now this bleep bleep Michael Redwine is talking to the Mormon Christ. Just like the Jews, the Pharisees, were talking to Jesus. Okay? Here we go. Your emotions are profound. That's enough for me to disregard anything you say thereafter anyway. Nobody flatters, pacifies, and deceives me. I don't give you credibility. You will not get to me. You automatically lost me. You need to look deeper within your own soul. Bleep you. <laughs> and come to the realization that Satan, not Satan, Satan. I like Satan. I don't wear satin. I know the church has magic underwear that is satin for women. I think for men too, but I don't think it's really popular with men. But I think I do recall that satin was available for me to buy. <laughs> as one who was taught by my mother as a very young boy, to go through the Sears catalog and look at the women in their various fashion attire at all stages of fashion, I became a, one who has great interest in women's fashion and still to this day, thanks to YouTube, I enjoy women's fashion, even though I witness many who are oppressed by YouTube also in violation of community guidelines, which is a national security threat violating the laws of the land and Supreme Court precedent. <clears throat> but apparently Satan is the great deceiver. Do not, and deceiver and not are all caps by the way, rest your soul in the teachings of one book or one religious dogma. Well by using dogma you don't seem to understand the meaning of dogma. <laughs> He's saying that I should rest my soul in the teachings of all books, all religious dogma. 
There's what's called faith, and then there's dogmatic faith. And it's kind of hard to distinguish because faith applies to religions and it's all dogma. <laughs> Nobody reads the Bible and the Book of Mormon when I did this video <laughs> to recognize the scientific process of faith. Not the evangelical process of replacing science with evangelical science. I'm talking about real science. The five physical senses. Where it shows that Jesus isn't real because Constantine said so in the first creed of Christianity. I refer to the Joseph Smith History 1838 verse 19. And all Mormons miss it. And nonetheless, dogma means believing in falsehoods, promoting a lie. That's dogma. And it isn't faith, it's a false faith. I don't think he knows that definition. The truth, all caps, is, all caps, within you, all caps. Within, no. The, no. Truth is you, all caps. I wonder if he's trying to emphasize something. So I'm my own truth. Little Miss, Mr. Falsehood. And he's got the name who is like unto God. Michael, the M, who, Kel, Ka, technically, like, as, L, God, the Canaanite deity, Philistine, Palestine, hello, See, the enemy is purposely fulfilling literal Christian interpretation prophecy. But, oops, the Christ is not from among the Jews or the Palestinians. Samson was a Danite, not a Philistine, but he married a Philistine woman. You got to know the prophecy. And remember, Joseph Smith said he's going to be a Mormon. Which means he's going to be a descendant of a Danite. Good soul, no. It comes from my mom's side. My mom is Judy, the betrayer of both Joseph of Egypt and Jesus. Esau's wife after he lost the birthright and blessing from let God prevail? No. Yah Prince of His Yah Prince of God. <clears throat> and so yet yeah, my mom's mom's side of the family, the Yearsleys, they come from the Danites, the pioneer Danites. Nobody else. Not the good cells, not the Fulmers. John Solomon Fulmer, not a Danite, the only one who was loyal to Joseph Smith. I have that video to do too. When Joseph Smith was about to be assassinated, the only Mormon that stood in his defense was John Solomon Fulmer. So what about you Mormons? I hope it's not the latter days. That would mean your Christ is here. What are you doing to him? How are you speaking to him? Do you even know who he is? Or are you like a Pharisee to him? Oopsies. And then my mom's father's side, Smiths. Not the church Smiths. 
the North Carolina Smiths. They were the slave owners, and my ancestor, slave owner, plantation owner, uh, raped my girl uh, ancestor, maternal ancestor. And so yes, I have black ancestry in me. And so it's interesting that the DNA produced me because I got blue eyes, baby's got blue eyes and my height. I'm not supposed to be tall. I'm not supposed to have the blue eyes. But I've got the dark hair and it's wavy curly because there's uh, Arab ancestry in me too through that uh, uh, maternal line of my mom's. But uh, it's on a branch off, so it's not the straight maternal line. And so DNA can't quite identify it, and it's too far back to connect to it. It's only through genealogy research that we were able to find the connection to the Arabs. And so my mom, when she's filling out the genealogy cards, she put Sheik as the name. <laughs> So yes, the Prince of Arabia, that's me. <laughs> Aladdin. There's the theme song in the description below, Speechless. Excellent.